Pets are one of the smaller aspects of Terraria that don't really give you much benefit, but they are still fun to collect and use. However, figuring out how to get each pet can be pretty hard, since there are just so many of them, especially when a good number of them are some of the rarest items in the game. So that's why, in today's video, I'll be going over how to get every pet in Terraria. To start off, we are going to go over all of the light pets, since they have some extra benefits. First up, we have the Shadow Orb, which you can get from smashing Shadow Orbs in the Corruption, or from corrupt and defiled crates. Mirroring the Shadow Orb, we have the Crimson Heart pet, which can drop from Crimson Hearts while you're smashing them, or from Crimson or Humatic crates. Next up, we have the Magic Lantern, which has the ability to light things like chests, making exploring dark areas a little bit easier. Which is also where you'll find it, since you can only buy it from the Skeleton Merchant, who spawns underground. After that, we have the Fairy Pets, which are a clear reference to Legend of Zelda, and are crafted using a bell, 25 pixie dust, 8 souls of light, and 8 souls of sight on a hard mode anvil. Moving on, we have the Flicker Wick, which is a part of the Dungeon Defenders 2 crossover, and is a drop from Old during the Old One's army. Next, we have the Wisp in a Bottle, which is a drop from Armored Bones enemies. Getting to arguably the most useful light pet, we have the Suspicious Looking Eye, which will highlight chests and enemies, which you can get from Moon Lord's treasure bags. The last three light pets can only be obtained in Master Mode, starting with the Jack-O-Lantern pet, which has a 1 in 4 chance to drop from Pumpkin. After that, we have the Toy Golem, which has a 1 in 4 chance from Golem. And finally, we have the Fairy Princess, which has a 1 in 4 chance to drop from the Empress of Light. Getting to the normal pets now, we're first going to go over all of the pets you can buy from the Traveling Merchant, which are the Baby Red Panda, the Stardew Valley Blue Chicken Pet, the Companion Cube Pet from Portal, the Star Pet ST, the Fennec Fox, the Glittery Butterfly, and finally, the Little Harpy. Sticking with pets you can only buy from NPCs, let's go over the ones you get from the Zoologist, since she also happens to have a good bit, which are the Baby Werewolf, the Dynamite Kitten, Plantero, which is a personal favorite of mine, and finally, we have the Volt Bunny. Moving on, let's finish off the NPC section of this video by looking at the NPCs that only sell one pet, starting with the Witch Doctor, who will sell the pet Tiki Spirit. After that, we have the Pet Parrot, which can be bought from the Pirate. Next, we have Bernie, which can be bought from the Princess. And finally, for the last pet you can buy from an NPC, we have Baby Truffle, which can be bought from Truffle. Finally getting to the normal pets now, first up we have the Zephyr Fish, which has a 0.13% chance to be fished up from any body of water with max fishing power. Sticking with pets you can get from fishing, next up we have the Pet Junimo. To get this, you will first need to fish up a can of Joja Cola, which you can find in any body of water, and then go talk to the Dryad with it in your inventory, and finally click the Purify option to make a portal open up where the Junimo will pop through. Next we have the Pet Turtle which can be found in ivy chests or jungle and bramble crates, which can all be found in the jungle. After that, we have the Squashling, which has a 0.5% drop from fully grown pumpkins. After that, we have the Shark Pup, which can be found in water chests or ocean and seaside crates, which can both easily be found in the ocean. Up next, we have one of the rarest pets in the game, the Sugar Glider which has a 1 in 1,000 chance to drop from trees when you shake them. Another pet that's pretty rare is Spiffo, which is a reference to the game Project Zomboid, and has a 0.07% chance to drop from any zombie in Terraria. Moving on, we have the Shadow Mimic, which can be found in shadow chests and obsidian or hellstone crates. After that, we have the Pet Dog, which has a 0.24% chance to drop from presents during the Christmas season. Next, we have Pigman, which has a 0.07% chance to drop from evil biome enemies in normal worlds, or 0.2% on the constant secret seed. Moving on, we have the Mini Minotaur, which has a 4.8% chance to drop from iron and mithril crates. Getting to another rare one, we have the Pet Lizard, which has a 1 in 1,000 chance to drop from lizard enemies in the jungle town. Example. Moving on, we have the Glomer, which has a 1% chance to drop from Derplings. Next, we have Eyeball Spring, which has a 1 in 15 chance to drop from Eyesores during the Solar Eclipse, or a 1 in 10 chance in Expert in Master Mode. After that, we have the Black Cat, which has a 0.67% chance to drop from goodie bags you get during the Halloween season. Up next, we have the Baby Snowman, which has a 5% chance to drop from Ice Mimics. Getting to another rare pet now, we have the Pet Baby Dino 
Dinosaur, which has a 0.01% chance to drop while you put Silt or Slush into an Extractinator, or a 0.027% chance if you use Desert Fossils instead of Silt or Slush. Moving on, we have the Baby Penguin, which can be found in frozen chests and frozen or boreal crates. And finally, for the last normal pet in Terraria, we have the Baby Imp, which can be found in shadow chests and in obsidian or hellstone crates. For the next set of pets, let's take a look at the ones that will drop from bosses in Classic and Expert mode, starting with the Baby Hornet, which has a 1 in 15 chance to drop from Queen Bee normally, or a 1 in 9 chance in Expert mode. Next we have the Baby Eater, which has a 5% chance to drop from the Eater of Worlds. Sticking with the evil biomes, up next we have the Baby Face Monster, which is also a 5% chance drop, but from the Brain of Cthulhu instead. Moving on to an extremely useful pet, we have Chester, who's a walking usable chest and is a 1 in 3 drop from Deerclops. After that, we have the Sapling Pet, which normally has a 1 in 20 chance to drop from Plantera, but will have a 1 in 15 chance to drop in Expert Mode. Up next, we have the pet Spider, which has up to a 12% chance to drop from Pumpkin during the Pumpkin Moon event. After that, we have Baby Grinch, which normally has up to a 1.6% chance to drop from the Ice Queen, but its chance to drop in Expert Mode is between 3 and 6.6%. Moving on, we have the Cursed Sapling, which has up to a 20% chance to drop from the Grieving Wood during the Pumpkin Moon event. Next, we have Horde Dragon, which normally has a 1 in 6 chance to drop from Dark Mages, but it will have a 1 in 4 chance to drop in Expert Mode. And finally, for the last pet you can get from a boss, we have the Propeller Gato, which, just like the last pet, normally has a 1 in 6 chance to drop from Dark Mages, but will have a 1 in 4 chance to drop in Expert Mode. Now, let's go over all of the pets that you can only get in Master Mode. Unlike some of the pets I went over earlier, all of the Master Mode only pets are drops from bosses, making them slightly easier to get in my opinion. First up, we have the mascot of my channel, the Prince Slime Pet, which has a 25% chance to drop from King Slime. Sticking with Slimes, up next we have the Princess Slime, which has a 25% chance to drop from Queen Slime. Once you have both of those pets though, you can use their two summoning items to craft the Resplendent Dessert, which will summon both of the pet slimes at the same time. The rest of the Master Mode only pets each have a 25% chance to drop from their specific boss which are the Suspicious Eye, which drops from the Eye of Cthulhu, the Spider Brain, which drops from the Brain of Cthulhu, the Eater of Worms, which drops from the Eater of Worlds, Tiny Deerclops, which drops from Deerclops, the Honey Bee, which drops from Queen Bee, the Plantera Seedling, which drops from Plantera, Skeletron Jr., which drops from Skeletron, Tiny Fishron, which drops from Duke Fishron, Res and Spaz, which drops from the Twins, Mini Prime, which drops from Skeletron Prime, Destroyer Light, which drops from the Destroyer, the Alien Skater, which drops from the Martian and Saucer, the Baby Ogre, which drops from Ogres, the Everscream Sapling, which drops from Everscreams, the Ice Queen, which drops from Ice Queens, Itsy Betsy, which will drop from Betsy, the Phantasmal Dragon, which drops from the Lunatic Cultist, and finally, for the last Master Mode only pet, we have the Moonling, which will drop from Moonlord. And finally, we are going to go over the five pets that are pretty special compared to every other pet in Terraria, starting with arguably the rarest pet in the game, the Dirt Block Pet. In every Terraria world made after the 1.4.4 update, you will have a set number of dirt blocks replaced by a block that looks exactly like the normal dirt blocks, which is the dirt block pet item. Another pet which you can only get a certain amount of in each world is the Caveling Gardener. This is a pet that is a part of the Terraria X Core Keeper collab and is summoned using the Glow Tulip, which will randomly spawn underground on the insides of your world in set amounts based on the size of your world, just like the dirt block pet. Moving on, we have the Baby Skeletron Head, which is a drop from the Dungeon Guardian, which may sound easy as getting the other boss pets, but that's not exactly the case here. The Dungeon Guardian is a big floating skull that will come out and attack you once you start getting deeper into the dungeon, but it will always insta-kill you if it lands a hit, no matter what your stats are. And you'll also only be able to deal 1-2 to two damage, no matter what weapons and gear you have. And finally, for the last pet in all of Terraria, we have the Pet Bunny. This was a pretty special pet, since it would change colors based on what your player's shirt was. And it was also normally only available through the Collector's Edition of Terraria, which isn't sold firsthand anymore. But there's still a way to get it, which I covered in the video I have on screen now. That wraps up this video. If you made it this far into the video, let me know by commenting Honeybee, and also let me know what your favorite Terraria pet is. Thanks for sticking to the end, and as always, make sure to have a wonderful day.